students uh, now we'll be talking about therapeutic diets and under that what kind of modifications we should do for various disorders so now i'm going to start with the dietary modification in diarrhea so first of all let me define what is diarrhea for you it is the passage of stools with increased frequency fluidity or volume compared to the usual for a given individual diarrhea is one of the most common symptoms of a digestive problem it is a response of the bowel to infection drugs food or disease these factors can lead to the passage of unformed stools acute diarrhea is the chief cause of morbidity and mortality in young children all over the world more so in the developing countries according to unicef diarrhea causes 9% of all deaths worldwide among children under the age of 5 now this is usually due to the resulting dehydration and death usually occurs in less economically developed countries where droughts are more common and clean water is limited there are many possible causes of diarrhea now sometimes it can be difficult to determine what is the exact cause of diarrhea the most common causes include bacterial or viral infections it can be due to a side effect of medication such as radiation chemotherapy or antibiotics food intolerances like lactose intolerance spoiled food or contaminated water or a person who uses too much of laxatives due to constipation surgery in which part of the bowl or stomach is removed and mental health factors for example stress also can cause uh, diarrhea in some people some people will experience loose stools more frequently than many other individuals persistent diarrhea could be the result of a range of bowel disease conditions which can include now these are the chronic ones irritable bowel syndrome crohn's disease celiac disease and bowel cancer diarrhea may also be a side effect to an allergy or any medication you are taking such as antibiotics or laxative now common symptoms of diarrhea include loose watery stools followed by headache bloating in the stomach lower abdominal pain severe nausea all the time the person feels that he is ready to vomit loss of appetite weight loss and all the above symptoms lead to weight loss when the diarrhea is chronic the we divide diarrhea into different types uh, three different syndromes of diarrhea have been defined each reflecting a different pathogenesis that is cause and requiring different approaches to treatment first and the foremost is acute watery diarrhea it refers to diarrhea that begins acutely with passage of loose or watery stools without any visible blood again i repeat acute watery diarrhea that begins acutely that means suddenly with passage of very loose or watery stools without any blood in the stools vomiting may occur and fever also may be present if diarrhea occurs for more than 14 days it is called persistent diarrhea then the next category is dysentery it is the term which is used for diarrhea with visible blood dysentery may also be associated with fever and we have a particular term due to severe cramps in the stomach and this term is called as tenesmus that is a person upon going to the visiting the toilet or defecating is followed by severe cramps in the lower abdomen or navel area then we have chronic diarrhea it is recurrent again and again it occurs or long lasting diarrhea due to non infectious causes such as either a person's sensitivity to gluten or inherited metabolic disorders now what happens in the body when a person is suffering with diarrhea i put under the heading of physiological disturbances in the body now the fluid which is lost during diarrhea comes from extracellular fluid or what is known as ecf replacement fluids should be of similar composition 
that means if the person is losing fluids in the form of diarrhea one needs to give fluids orally in order to replace the lost fluids so those replacement fluids should be of similar composition which should be relatively rich in sodium with low amounts of potassium loss of water from the body it causes a reduction or shrinkage of extracellular compartments because fluid is lost and as intracellular compartment leading to dehydration and various other symptoms such as impaired skin elasticity that means in the cellular when the fluid is lost the skin loses its elasticity and when you try to hold the skin between your thumb and forefinger the skin does not go back to its normalcy then we have weak and thready pulse that means the pulse rate is extremely low and very very weak sometimes we will not be able to feel it so clearly low blood pressure there is a fall in the bp a fall in the frequency and volume of urine all these are symptoms due to loss of body fluids followed by cold extremities both hands and feet of the person suffering with severe diarrhea they become cold when somebody else touches them and the breathing becomes very very rapid and deep the person breathes very deeply has difficulty in breathing this is how the what we call the symptoms of dehydration are very clearly seen in a person with severe loss of fluid due to diarrhea now we also have diarrhea during weaning now weaning is a term which is used to denote when the infant is shifted from mother's milk onto solids so along with the milk feeds or mother's milk after 6 months the infant is introduced to certain solid or semi solid food and there is a period which we call it as weaning period now a lot of diarrhea can occur during this if due to the adjustment problems of the infant stomach to the new food now acute diarrhea during weaning can be due to indigestion when the weaning food is introduced too early that is the infant's digestive system is not ready or if there is not enough digestive enzyme secretion diarrhea can occur therefore nowadays pay attention to the fact that WHO has prescribed exclusive breastfeeding for the first 6 months of life of an infant and this 6 months allows for the complete development of the digestive system with respect to the increasing the ability of the infant's stomach to digesting other solid food once this 6 months is over and solid food is introduced now poor food hygiene during weaning is another reason for diarrhea during weaning as a food which is not cooked properly food which is mishandled where hygiene and sanitation are not followed either by the mother or the person who is feeding the infant can cause infectious diarrhea a child can also develop food allergies and food intolerances can also lead to diarrhea because unless once a new food is introduced one should watch for 2 to 3 days to see whether the child develops any diarrhea which is an indication possibility of uh, allergies due to that particular food especially foods like uh, wheat or any wheat based product or white of an egg these are one of the two common uh, most common kind of foods which can cause allergy during weaning now what kind of diet should be given for a child if they have or an infant in weaning diarrhea now encouragement of breastfeeding should be there better food hygiene to be followed by the food handler which can be a mother or any other attendant like grandmother or an aya etc improvement of nutritional status of children and food and environmental sanitation are important strategies for lowering the incidence of early childhood diarrhea now this early childhood diarrhea only is responsible for increased amount of deaths in infants or children in the third world countries the fluid management during diarrhea in weaning 
Now, the key to effective fluid management in childhood diarrhea is early replacement of fluid losses because once the child loses a lot of fluids, it is very very difficult to control the complications. Therefore, early replacement of fluid which is lost from the body is very important. It starts with the first sign of liquid stool. If the mother or attendant notices that the infant is um, passing stools which are more liquid or fluid in consistency than the normal stool of an infant, immediately they should start feeding uh, fluids to the child. Plenty of fluid should be given to the child early in the illness to prevent dehydration. As long as renal function is maintained, profound electrolyte and pH disturbances do not occur. Initial management with any fluid available. The child is offered fluids which can be as much quantity the child can take orally without vomiting. So, it can be fluids such as coconut water, rice kanji with salt, thin buttermilk, lemon sugar and salt beverage that is nicely boiled water with lemon sugar and a pinch of salt mixed together can be fed to the child and it may be given in unlimited quantity either with a spoon very frequently or in small drips from a tumbler or a glass. In mild cases of diarrhea and vomiting, these are controlled within a short period and dehydration does not develop only when the child's lost fluids are replaced by whatever I have given you earlier. Now, we also have something scientific called as oral rehydration therapy. Now, oral rehydration therapy can be uh, with homemade solution or with the WHO prescribed formula. Now, first I will talk to you regarding homemade solution. For one glass of boiled and cooled water, one pinch of salt and one teaspoon of sugar can be added to prepare what we call ORS oral rehydration solution at home. Now, oral rehydration salt solution of the formula prescribed by the WHO. If the diarrhea is prolonged and dehydration becomes evident, it is desirable to rehydrate the child orally by administering a solution with the composition given by WHO. This is administered with a spoon or in small sips. In this formula, usually a 1 year old infant needs about 1000 ml or 1 liter of ORS in 24 hours during diarrhea. Now, in the uh, WHO prescribed, the sachets are available. This can be brought home and mixed with 1 liter of boiled and cooled water. The infant should be other precautions which the mother should take are the infant should be continued to be breastfed during diarrhea as breast milk contains certain phagocytes with various immunoglobulins which protect against most enteropathogens that is the disease causing microorganisms in the intestines. Thus, breast milk helps the infant to recover from an attack of diarrhea in terms of nutrients it supplies its rehydrating effect and helps to prevent further infection due to its protective properties. So, understand that mother should continue to breastfeed the infant because it has multiple benefits during diarrhea. The bowel should not be rested during episodes of diarrhea. In our generally, it is believed that starve an infant and do not give anything orally so that the diarrhea gets controlled on its own, but that is not going to happen and it is a very wrong strategy to follow. Therefore, the bowel should not be rested during episodes of diarrhea, but intake of artificial milk and other lactose containing products should be held back for a day or two and the child should be only on mother's milk. Milk should be diluted with equal quantities of water and fed along with ORS till the diarrhea subsides. Fermented milk or what we call buttermilk with a culture of 
probiotic bacteria discourages the growth of pathogenic bacteria. Now, rice based solutions, potato based solutions, millets, maize and other cereal flours reduce the number and volume of stools that is taking small quantities of these powders and adding and boiling in large quantities of water and feeding to the child reduces the volume and the number of stools. Carbohydrates in these foods also promote the absorption of water and salt. For older children, milled cereals are preferred to whole cereals that means reducing the fiber content in the diet. A well cooked porridge of rice or gruel of rice and pulse is well tolerated. Mashed bananas are also good. These foods should be started within 4 to 6 hours of starting any kind of uh, diarrhea treatment. Soft drinks and fruit juices with high sugar content should be easily digestible and given in small quantities at very frequent or short intervals. Most children tolerate small quantities of fats and oils which are rich sources of energy and the diarrhea does not become worse. Solid foods should be offered as soon as the child is able to eat. Parents must be educated on the use of using safe or portable drinking water, hygienic food handling, usage of oral rehydration therapy, continued breastfeeding and supplementation with vitamin A, folic acid and zinc. These are found to be very very beneficial in diarrhea. Now we shall go to diarrhea management in adults. Now nutritional care for adults with diarrhea includes the replacement of lost fluids as usual and electrolytes by increasing the oral intake of fluids particularly those which are high in sodium and potassium such as clear broths or vegetables and clear fruit juices which have been strained and electrolyte solutions. Pectin from cooked apples or other soluble fibers such as ripe bananas may also help in controlling diarrhea. Patients should be encouraged to avoid caffeine that is coffee or tea because it increases the secretion of fluids and further aggravates dehydration. So, tea and coffee should be avoided during diarrhea and also this tea and coffee stimulate the peristaltic movement in the stomach. When the diarrhea stops, starchy foods like rice, sago, potato and plain cereals can be given followed by protein foods. So, initially after the controlling of diarrhea immediately protein foods should not be added to the diet but mostly simple carbohydrate based foods should be given. Fat need not be limited if the individual is otherwise healthy. Sugar, alcohols, lactose, fructose and large amounts of sucrose may worsen the diarrhea and need to be limited. This is very very important that is do not add any sugar, lactose, any form of sweetener to the food or buttermilk etc because they aggravate diarrhea. In chronic diarrhea, fluid should be replaced parenterally and enterally that is a person should be given oral fluids as well as if needed one can introduce what we call the intramuscular fluids which are called as parenterally that is isotonic solution of salt and sugar. The loss of iron from intestinal bleeding in case of dysentery may be severe enough to cause anemia. The nutritional deficiencies cause what we call malabsorption. As the diarrhea begins to resolve, the addition of more normal amounts of fiber very very slowly to the diet may help to restore normal mucosal function increasing water and electrolyte absorption and this also increases the viscosity of the stools that is very slowly as the diarrhea is improving slowly certain amounts of soft fiber can be included so that the normalcy returns back to the GI tract. Barley, banana, curd, rice and potatoes may lessen diarrhea 
whereas caffeine containing beverages as I said tea, coffee or coke etc should be avoided. Fried foods and foods rich in fiber they will worsen the diarrhea. So, during the period or episodes of diarrhea these foods should be avoided. Now, one recent trend is the role of probiotics in the uh, prevention or reducing the lessening of diarrhea symptoms. Now, probiotics which are found naturally in all fermented milk products such as curd, buttermilk and yogurt and have shown to be beneficial for various types of diarrhea including chemotherapy, radiation induced diarrhea also. One must avoid raw fruits and vegetables especially with skins and seed. So, raw whole fruits and uh, vegetable salads should be avoided. Whole grain breads such as and cereals like uh, roti, chapati, pulka made with all kinds of cereals and millets should be avoided. Brown rice, wild rice, nuts, seeds, popcorn, beans, various kind of lentils or dals, peas and corn also should be avoided. One must avoid fatty and greasy foods fried foods, pizza and gravies also. Salad dressings such as those which are uh, based with vinegar or even mayonnaise etc or rich desserts should also be avoided such as pastries, donuts, potato chips which will aggravate diarrhea in some individuals. Caffeine can speed up how quickly food moves through the body. As I told you early that caffeine, tea, coffee affects the movement peristaltic movement of the GI tract. Avoid large amounts of regular coffee, tea, colas and other caffeinated beverages. Some people have lactose intolerance which can sometimes cause diarrhea. Now lactose is a sugar that is found in milk and milk products. If it is suspected that a person has lactose intolerance then one should try avoiding milk and milk products for a short period of time like week to 10 days to see if this helps. If the diarrhea improves then one must talk to the dietitian or uh, doctor and possibility that one may have lactose intolerance. Now, there are certain other tips which I would like to give you students such as one should when somebody has diarrhea one should st uh, start eating small and frequent meals. Do not eat large meals like a normal breakfast, lunch or dinner, but more importantly small quantities at frequent intervals with small snacks in between which are easy to digest and which do not aggravate your diarrhea. Limit physical activity directly after meals. So, take some physical rest after meals. Make sure you drink enough fluids in a day to replace the lost fluids that is enough amount of volume of water 1 to 1.5 liters minimum. Try drinking fluids at room temperature. Do not drink it too hot or too cold. If the diarrhea is severe, one may need to limit one's diet to only clear fluids which we have already dealt with. Clear fluids include juices without pulp, clear gelatin deserts, broth, clear fruit juices etc. So, these are some of the tips that are for person suffering with diarrhea. But let me sum it up that today we have dealt with a lesson diarrhea and the dietary restrictions both for infants, early childhood uh, diarrhea as well as for adults and I hope it has been very very clear to you what is diarrhea and what happens, what are the changes, what are its symptoms and the type of food that one must give and what are the foods to be avoided.